Suicide Squad is a game, and it's coming out. It's a single-player game. But guess what? You have to be connected to the internet to play it. Isn't that so cool? Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Man, talk about a game with an amazing concept, but whose execution I have doubts about because of the live service components that are going into it. The folks at Rocksteady recently- I feel like a lot of games force live service now. They force live service so they can necessitate a battle pass and uh, continuous payments of the game. I actually am a big fan of live service games. I am a live service game enjoyer. Most games I play are live services, and I appreciate that very much. However, there are other games that are not live services, and I can appreciate them as well. I only showcased the game during the latest State of PlayStation, and you can see right here the likes to dislikes ratio on the state of play as a whole is already not mm -hmm. looking great. But then you look at videos specifically highlighting Suicide Squad and you'll find that the likes to dislikes ratio is even worse. Here's PlayStation's official upload of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League official co-op. And you've got to keep in mind also the dislike ratio would be even higher if it was made public. Because people are just, bro, people are herd animals. If they see bad, oh, bro, everybody dislikes this. Yeah, I don't like it either. Gameplay, it's six minutes long. That just purely shows gameplay. Yeah. You can see right here, 5.9 thousand likes versus a whopping 19,000 19, dislikes. Which is fucking insane, by the way. Look at this right here. here give me one second. Uh, you, you have 200,000 views. That's So that is like every one in 10 people that watched this video about downvoted it that's so bad bro that's awful and scrolling down you can see some of the feedback that people not have that bad, been really? sharing yes it is ah yes captain boomerang and a signature weapon shotgun referring to the fact that a lot of the gameplay in this game just seems to be third person shooting while the different characters do have melee attacks and special abilities and whatnot uh -huh. And while there is a lot of verticality with how large the levels look and how you can traverse aerially either by swinging or flying around, the core gameplay of each character ultimately feels like it's just shooting and like that's the majority of what you'll be doing, which is a bit disappointing and makes- That type of like aerial gameplay was kind of good, but there's nothing here that makes me think to myself, man, I can't wait till this comes out each hero less unique stand out less it's a stark contrast from rocksteady's previous arkham series games where the entirety of those games combat revolved around making you feel like batman his entire kit felt mm -hmm. batman appropriate whereas in suicide squad it just feels like at its core it's kind of like a generic third person looter shooter with superhero elements attached to it rather than a purely superhero game where you really feel like those characters Again, I haven't played the game. I'll hold well, out. I think that, like, a lot of the Suicide Squad characters, like, they're not superheroes in the same way that, like, Superman is. But, I mean, like, Batman's a superhero, and he's just a human. So, it's like, if you can make it work for Batman, you should be able to make it work for Harley Quinn or Deadshot or anybody else. Judgment, but... You know, what they showed us, it, I don't know, it was just not jiving with me. And I don't know if it was just me, but looking at the gameplay, there were aspects of it that looked janky, the animation transitions and whatnot. There was just something about it that felt very looter shootery. When you look at multiplayer games, you can... I think this game, you know what the, the word is that I would have for this game? Safe. I think this is a safe game that will generate a profit of 23% that they will then add updates for in the future to make shareholders happy. Yeah, it is a safe game that follows all of the same principles, does all of the same things that all of the other games do, and there's nothing innovative, at least to I, that I can see, uh, about it. Tell that there has to be a sacrifice and fidelity to accommodate the technical aspects of multiplayer, whereas in a single-player experience, because it's an isolated instance, you can really push the graphics and animation fidelity. Yeah. And I feel like some of that gets lost in Suicide Squad because it is primarily a multiplayer experience. You can play it single player with bots, but it feels very much like it is a live service a la Marvel's event. I, I, I mean, like, if they have it, if the game is m mostly a online game, 
Like, I can see why they'd want it to be always online. But I, I, I don't know why they can't have it to where, like, you can make a character that doesn't play online. I don't see why you can't do that. Because, like, if you're worried about people hacking, which is, like, obviously what the issue is. That's why you want to have a game to always be online so you can, like, watch out for hacks. If that's an issue, why not let people make characters that are offline characters? There's no reason. I do think it looks better than Marvel's Avengers, though that's not saying much. But it's got those vibes of, oh, I'm going to be and they grinding can't monetize a lot. You? Yeah. And, it is gonna... and, and that's probably what it is. Like, if, if they want it to always be online, how much do you guys want to bet every single time that you boot up this game, you're going to be bombarded with all the new Battle Pass th stuff? Try to draw out the experience as much as possible. It's not going to be this very meticulously designed mm -hmm. and properly paced experience. I don't know. That's just the feeling I get. Again, haven't played the game. We'll have to hold out. But that's the general worry that people have. I do like the cutscenes that I've seen so far. Maybe it'll have a good enough story to carry the experience through. But the fact that the game has been designed with a live service co-op experience in mind means that playing it solo, I get the sense that the overall... I don't really think the Suicide Squad is particularly interesting. Because I think that they're edgy, but they're mainstream commercial edgy. So they're actually kind of cringy and extremely narrow in what they can be edgy about. I think it's like so commercialized. Like for example, like you know what the you know what my version of the Suicide Squad is? The Watchmen. That's a fucking edgy group of co of comic book heroes. This is just to sell fucking comic books or not sorry, not comic books. Uh action figures and movie tickets and games level design game design set piece design and whatnot will be Person. held back sure. that the campaign won't feel like it has that level of handcraftedness that single player focused experiences do the kind of handcraftedness you see in something like god of war or hell the old arkham titles here's another comment that reads battle pass check looter shooter mechanics check gear score check damage numbers check builds check mindless hack and slash you have gear score are we playing Wrath of the Lich King again? Like, what is this? Single player gear score? Like, what happened? Dude, I was watching s Fand play uh, fucking, what was the game? Uh, Metroid Prime. Uh, they updated Metroid Prime. I'm going to play that, by the way. I, I saw him playing it, and it was so good. I was watching him play it. I'm like, this is such a good game. It's amazing. Why can't... Why do we have this? What is this? Check. Well done, Drives Rocksteady. Me crazy. Everything the game community just loves about AAA live service titles. Some people yeah. are hoping that at least this game has more enemy variety. And again, I feel like this is, again, too big to succeed. Because you have to bet that if this is a AAA title, the AAA title where they're using the likeness of A-list actors in the game, to an extent at least, and also the IP of DC Comics, there are millions of dollars going into this game. Like millions and millions and millions of dollars going into this game. And guess what? They're not going to let it fail. So instead of going with something that's a little bit more risky, they go with something that is safe, that checks all the boxes, that their focus groups of you know, people that play uh, Candy Crush... Uh, that's their favorite game as they play Candy Crush. Their focus groups tell them are the good things for video games. Only indies have integrity anymore? Not always true. You have things like Elden Ring, and I think that Nintendo puts out pretty good games every once in a while too. And I don't think it's only indies, but I think that many AAA games, I think that we are getting to a point where more often than not, a AAA game will be too safe to be interesting than Marvel's Avengers, man. I just hope it's not like Avengers where you're killing the same Brainiac bots over and over again. Oh, I wonder. And then some are expressing disappointment that given Rocksteady's pedigree that this is what we're getting out of him eight years after the last title, we had to wait eight years for another Rocksteady game and we got this. And the list just goes on and on. These are generally the types of comments that you'll see scrolling down. Just the general... Let's see. Sonic is reading this. Guns are like little toys. 
There's already a huge problem in this game. You have to pay seventy dollars. It was said, said to come with a battle pass. I've seen the gameplay. I'm glad to see I have zero regrets for skipping this. Seventy dollars. That's the thing, man. Is like, how can you, like, and again, inflation is a bitch. And I understand that it costs a lot of money to make a game. And you've got to charge $70 sometimes if you want to make that money back. But the reality is that not everybody has to do that. Vampire survivors didn't have to do that. And guess what? Many other games that are, came out a year or two ago don't have to do that either because now they're being sold for less. So... I completely understand, and I think it's fair for them to price it at $70, but I think that it is equally fair for people to say the value proposition that you are asking me to engage in for $70, fuck you, I can get it for three. Whole expression of or, fuck you, I can get it for free. Disappointment and concern that this is not the kind of game that people will want out of a Suicide Squad AAA video game, much like how yeah. Marvel's Avengers wasn't the type of experience that people were hoping that was for awful. out of people an hated Avengers game. AAA game. And looking at other Suicide Squad uploads... It's like, I also want to draw attention to the Marvel Avengers game because there are people who say that if streamers all play a game that it's going to blow the game up. Every single streamer got a sponsor to play the Marvel Avengers game. I don't know why I didn't. What the fuck? Uh, by the way, like I should, they should have paid me to play that fucking game. Uh, I've watched all the movies. Anyway, so I was getting mad about that. I'm trying to remember where was I at. Right, all these streamers played this game, and guess what? The game died. Streamers cannot make a bad game good. They can only make a good game more popular can see that the likes to dislikes ratio is similar. This video that I showed you right here is just the gameplay segment, but there is a second video that was uploaded to the official PlayStation channel. Developers commenting over gameplay and kind of highlighting the features you can expect out of it. The dev commentary footage YouTube upload you can see right here has 1.5 thousand likes versus a whopping 5.9 thousand dislikes. Scrolling through the comments here, you can see that people are expressing a similar level of disappointment based on what they saw in the showcase and based on the fact that it was confirmed in the showcase that this game would be heavily leaning into live service models. Oh, Reception yeah. doesn't fare better in other outlets uploads like IGN here uploaded the extended gameplay of Suicide Squad. You can see right here 5.9. Oh, a lot of people a lot of people have been saying the same thing. Like I, I saw Mudahar tweeted about it. And like the thing is like I thought this died whenever PlayStation 4 shit on X oh, shit on Xbox for trying to push this for their whole system. Please, if you are making a video game, if your video game has a single player option, there is no value that is added to the buyer of your video game that you make them stay online. And you might think that it's not a big deal. And you know what? It's probably not a big deal. So if it's not a big deal, why do you make them do it? If you are that worried about hacking... Just make it to where you can make characters that can't go online. It's so easy. Thousand likes versus seven point four thousand dislikes. Here's another iGen upload the game overview trailer with the dev commentary. Mm -hmm. Six point two thousand likes versus ten thousand dislikes. This is GameSpot's upload of the co-op gameplay trailer. Three point three thousand likes versus six point seven thousand dislikes. So on and so That's forth. Really you get bad. the idea. And the main culprit behind the negative reception is this portion of the showcase where the developers kind of talk about the live service elements and show. UI that very much resemble what you'd see in a Every live service. Game. So let me show this to you guys. And yeah, it's. I not haven't seen this yet. I didn't watch State of Play. About. So here we go. Each character has a power level in the game that we call Gear Score. As you That's so crazy. So they have this new idea of having a power level and calling it Gear Score. Holy fuck, I wish I had watched this live. Oh my god. Can you believe that? You acquire new gear in the game, your Gear Score Ugh. goes up. And as that number uh, goes makes up, sense. it means that you can take on much harder missions. As part of this progression... Gear with, with different more rarities. More and more builds. More and more ways to customize your character to really fit the way you want to play. Every firearm in our game... Just a bunch of stuff you'd be looting. So in Suicide This happened to me all the time. This is, again, a second, uh, a second audio layer because he's watching this to... 
yeah, it it's, it, it, it happens. Okay, guys. Quad killer just and then like get Lots of choice to use the weapons that you need and to complete your missions. But most importantly, you will be able to customize your squad. A lot of cosmetics. Like. That no you doubt the lock behind my. Oh yeah, cosmetics. What a surprise! I, I wonder if. You will be able to customize your squad. I feel like this is at least 19.99 in the shop, with a timer that says three days and 12 hours left, right underneath it. I feel like this is easily 19.99. Yeah, 50 dollars, something like that. A lot of cosmetics like. that no you doubt they'll lock behind microtransactions, you battle pass. Any of the outfits you can be running around in your asylum jail outfit. Not and stuff you can like unlock purely through forever. gameplay. I like it. Our game is a one to four player co-op experience, which means that all the missions in the game have been designed to support solo play, playing with a friend, two friends, or three friends. That's cool. For the single player fans, you can play so Marvel's Avengers S filling in the role of the squad. So hopefully with feel like you're part of better team. design levels and, and you can switch them if you want. <laughs> missions like shark and activities. Uh, or we can say, well, I think Harley will be game play. Bro, how are you a shark and you don't bite people? Like, I mean, that's what sharks do. It doesn't make any sense. This mission, so I'm gonna switch over and I'm gonna try her out. But if you really want to tear it up, going in with a full group the of four, ding, 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 right there. experience the full mayhem. The Winner! Just felt such, like such a looter you get to shooter really thing. Experience the dynamics between how you can all play together in different places. Oh yeah, stuff that enemies drop. To take on Brainiac and the Justice League. Oh, the fun is right here. There's a smoothness to the gameplay that's... God, I cannot believe, like, why is it that every single time they have Harley Quinn, it just is so cringe? Like, uh, sometimes the reason why I think it happens is that they're afraid of making her actually fucking psycho. And that's what they should do. But the thing is, making her actually fucking psycho would be, you know, kind of politically incorrect, and it would be risky, and so they don't do that. Seems cool, but... Like, remember, like, that one girl in Final Fantasy? That, like, that mass... I, I, Yositsu, I think that was her name? And she fucking stomps on this guy's head? She steps on him? And she was just a massive fucking bitch! She was awful! Rocksteady will continue its legacy. I still remember her. After it's launched. We're going to deliver lots of new content to our players. We're going to have new playable characters. That's why new she's great, yes. And new missions. For players who like to customize their looks, we'll offer a battle pass that only contains cosmetic There items. it is. There's just going to be so much for the players to enjoy. Yeah. We'll include a battle pass that only contains cosmetic purchases. I don't think that's a big deal, but like if the battle pass only contains cosmetic purchases, then what is the difference between a battle pass and achievements in the game? It doesn't make sense. They're literally just describing a live service without saying the word live service because they know the stigma that it carries. If you like co-op games, if you like customizing your characters, if you want to play that's reasonable given this game kind of has it all. It's very fast paced. It's really what live services it's loud have and become and, and in your face, and it's going to be really, really fun. Hey, the negative aspects to live services execution? that have seeped well, into don't gaming. Touch that dial. So yeah, that's the same. Yeah, I don't think live services are fundamentally bad. I think that the way that AAA studios monetize live services have given them a bad reputation, because a live service game like Fortnite, for example, is incredible. A live service game like Final Fantasy XIV or World of Warcraft, incredible. A live service game like Valorant, absolutely incredible. Live service games are not bad, but I think what people are tired of is whenever a live service game, live service features are forced into the game. Segment that made people go, ugh, on top of the fact that the gameplay just looks more generic looter shooter than the Arkham series, which had such a unique identity in both visuals and gameplay because it was specifically built to be a single player, isolated Batman experience. This is all just literally giving off the same vibes that Marvel's Avengers did. It does look better than Marvel's Avengers again, but 
Uh, it's never a good thing to get any sort of vibe that's related to Marvel's Avengers. This is just not the direction I was expecting this game to go. This is just not what a lot of people wanted out of a rock steady game. And the best we can hope for is that when we do get our hands on it, it pleasantly surprises us. In the meantime, though, we have to just contend with the fact that this is a live service. And this is a game that despite allowing you to play... I think this is what the issue is. It's not even the fact that it's a live service game. The issue is that you have to be online for it. And also, none of that gameplay seemed... Nothing about what I've seen with this game excites me. There's never a time where I'm going to think, Hey guys, I want to go out of my way. There are a hundred other games out there. And I want to play this one. A solo with bots will require an internet connection, even if you're playing single player. This is something that was relayed by Rocksteady itself in their FAQ page. Here's a screenshot from Mario 64. Zooming into the image, you can see that there is a segment that reads, Is an internet connection required to play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League? The response reads, Yes, an internet connection is required to play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League solo or via Why? online co-op and if you're getting a sense of deja vu out of that it's because i recently covered redfall and how that game also has the exact same restriction that was also disclosed on the game's official pages faq it's also worth noting that last month on january 2023 there was a suicide squad leak that was first posted to 4chan before it spread to probably other true social media platforms and forums and new satellites yep. revealing warzone like ui battle pass menu well i think the warzone ui is fine like i'm not going to complain about the ui being like other successful shooter games that's totally okay and more i'm not going to show that screenshot here because warner brothers is going on a copyright takedown spree yeah. but there's a screenshot that was verified by video games chronicle here yeah they, they only want you to see that after you buy it said that the screenshot has been verified by a VGC source. It is understood to originate from a recent test build and shows mm -hmm. various menus planned for the Rocksteady co-op game. Now, of course, Rocksteady didn't uh -oh. give us an in-depth dive into the live service components, into the battle pass menu, the UI, and all these things because they know that that's the stuff people are least enthusiastic about. But based on that leaked screenshot, Insider Gaming bullet listed some assumptions that they made based on what they saw in that screenshot holy fuck some features that seem likely based on the content hey, oh i just read leak. that they said here in this article no fewer than six in-game currencies what this is a single player game What the fuck? Go from last oh month. Oh my that god! It seems likely that the game will boast single player and multiplayer gameplay, which we now know to be true, and will also mm -hmm. feature a battle pass optional upgrade, through which no doubt many of the most highly coveted cosmetics and whatnot will be locked behind. And I wouldn't put it past them if they put in some gameplay affecting rewards as well, like I don't know XP boosters. Well, and that's what they do. So like basically, what they want to do is they want to at first they want to sell cosmetics, and then after the game is already starting to die and the live service portion of the game is starting to die, then they add in pay-to-win stuff to milk those last people that are playing it for more money, and then they kill the game. It's like, it's like you know, you're milking the cow, you're milking the cow, you're milking the cow, cow's getting a bit older, now you slaughter the cow and you have a steak. That's how it works. This is the life cycle. And by the way, the cow, that's you. You're the cow. The usual stuff. Now, here's where things get really grim. There are no fewer than six in-game currencies. That usually is an indicator for a very grindy experience. Could point towards a rather grindy requirement. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely worried about that aspect. I hate grinding on the level that live services demand. I just want a well-paced experience that has a beginning, middle, and end that I can feel satisfied with that doesn't drag an experience out to the point of just tedium. Though, of course, insufferable grind is an intentional aspect of the experience because that's what's going to make people throw their hands up and go, screw it, I'll just spend money on this instead of treating this as my full-time job. Game companies... Oh, exactly, and that's kind of like, that's the issue we were talking about earlier with Lost Ark is like Lost Ark creates this system 
where you have to play the game constantly in order to keep up with it. But if you do that, then the system is designed so that you want to spend money. So it would never have been designed this way if there wasn't a way to use money to skip past it. So like it, it's the problem with like having pay to win and like pay for convenience features is that whenever you have these in the game, it creates a profit incentive for the developers to make it inconvenient or annoying. That's the reason. So they add intentional speed bumps for you to pay to take them away. I like to call these microtransactions time savers, but mm -hmm. really they are frustration mitigators. And the confusion generated by all of the different currencies will further incentivize people to just spend real money on things and get them quickly. And will also add a degree of separation between the in-game premium currencies and the real dollar value and worth. As far as UI goes, it was stated here that options closely resemble the likes of Warzone and Back for Blood. We got a glimpse of the UI in the gameplay showcase. And yeah, it looks like every other looter shooter, every other life service, the gear equipping, all the different rarities, oh, yeah. all the different currencies, just everything that was on display, I'm like, oh man, that gives me a bad feeling. Well, we've all seen this before. I think that's really what the issue is. It's that what you're really looking at is you're looking at a new skin of the same game. Like it's even called Loadout, for example. And I get that like some people, like every single time one of these games comes out, it's going to be somebody's first game like this. But there's also a certain amount of fatigue that games like this create. And I think that's why games like, uh, for example, Vampire Survivors or uh, like Hi-Fi Rush. Let me think of a few more, like the Hogwarts Legacy game, I think to a lesser extent. Uh, many of these games that come out that are especially more indie, they, have th they don't have these types of features in them. They're designed to just be fun to play. And they're not built with like a, um, a checklist. I've seen that UI design and framework before. The leaks show that there's going to be an in-game store suggesting of that course. skins and other cosmetics will be things that you can buy for real world money. The leak back then indicated that you'd be able to play solo with bots, which we now know to be true. And then finally, the leak showed a loadout menu that further opens the door to microtransactions like potential. So yeah, look, I cannot deny that my hype for Suicide Squad and for the prospect of just a new Rocksteady game has diminished significantly. I'm approaching this game with a heavy dose of cautious, I don't even want to say optimism. Honestly, I feel like I'm a little more pessimistic at this point. I've been so- This game reminds me of a lot of, uh, it's like I see games like this come out all the time where Every single thing about the game is a B minus. Like the graphics are a B minus, the gameplay is a B minus. Now a B minus is still a B, but it is a B minus. Why would I ever take my time to play this whenever I could do anything else? There's no compelling reason to play this game. It's just white noise by these types of games and Marvel's Avengers especially was such a travesty and this resembles Marvel's Avengers so much in terms of its live service model that I cannot help but be pessimistic. I hope they prove me wrong but given the history and track record of live services such as this given uh, the kinds of experiences that have gone out of live service models that implement similar features it's going to be very difficult for me to really be thrilled about this one and that goes doubly true because the gameplay just forget about the live service stuff just looking at the core gameplay i was a little underwhelmed it just feels like it has a very live service looter shootery generic kind of gameplay framework where so much of it is just shooting enemies with the guns that you'll be looting oh, yeah. it doesn't feel like the game leverages their individual abilities and powers as much as they could have because the live service framework is kind of the top priority in this game design and even just the game well, design it, it's not the live service element of it is really only used as a tool to direct users over to spending money in the game. 
that's what the real focus is. The focus is getting users to spend money in the game. And if you have it as a live service, you have people that are interacting with advertisements for how to spend money more often. The level design, the set pieces are much more reminiscent of sort of generic live service missions rather than the kinds of fully fleshed out scenarios yeah, in -game you get advertising. Yeah. in more campaign focused experiences. But that's just me. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on Suicide Squad based on the gameplay footage we have seen and based on the information relayed about what very clearly are live service elements. Share your thoughts in the comments below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out. Okay. Let me show you one of the strangest pro Give me one second. Suicide Squad kill- So... I just, I don't see why they keep doing these games. Like, I, I, actually that's not true. I do see why. I think that it's because this game is a safe option that will generate a profit and it will not be problematic. But I think that a lot of people are beginning to have the same feeling that I am that they are tired of playing games that are safe. They are tired of playing games that are designed by a focus group of people who do not play video games, you know, five hours a day like they do. That's the way that I feel about it. It's the Battle Pass. I, I think that the Battle Pass, the Game Pass, or sorry, I'll talk about Battle Pass. I don't think that the Battle Pass is the fundamental problem. I think the problem, because Fortnite has battle passes and the battle passes are pretty good. And also the Traveler's Log in World of Warcraft is effectively a battle pass, but I think it's a great addition to the game. I don't think battle passes are fundamentally bad, but I think a lot of games shoehorn battle passes in whenever they don't need to because the battle passes make more money. And also, you guys are making a very good point that Fortnite is not $70. So yeah, it's like whenever you spend $70 for a game, it's like if Harry Potter, you know, you had the Gryffindor Battle Pass, and at the very end of it, you get to ride a griffin, uh, you know, if you complete it. That would have been fucking ridiculous. But it's like Harry Potter, you bought the game, you played the game, and that's it. I think that's fair. I don't see why a single-player game needs a Battle Pass. There's no need for that. Let's see, I'll read you guys a few comments. Sort of leave a bad taste in your mouth. Yes, exactly. YouTube video recently hit the entire problem in the head. Are you interested in it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd have to see it. You, you just link it on my Reddit, and I'll take a look at it. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, you have all the house, uh, the house Battle Pass. There's like 20. Yeah, and that's the thing, is there's a lot of people that want to play different games, and I think Battle Passes are designed for mono gamers. And, and what, what I mean by a mono gamer is somebody who just plays one game. So it's like whenever you're playing and you have a battle pass in a game, you create this weird sense of like, uh, like, like this, this, like you, you have to play this game. Oh, you have to play this game. You have to play this game because you bought the battle pass for it. You feel like you're uh, obligated to do it. It's FOMO. Yeah, exactly. Pay battle passes are a problem to be honest because they add an, an uh, extensive advantages. Well, let me see if I can read this real quick. Fuck. Um, where is it? God damn it. I don't even see where that went. Oh, Pale Battle Pass problems, to be honest, because they add intensive and advantages in, uh, in game that would otherwise be in game free, like adding convenience of expense. I, I don't think that... The problem is that if Suicide Squad's gameplay was amazing and really, really good, like if its gameplay was as good as... I don't know. I'm trying to think of like a shooting game. Like I always like Gears of War gameplay. Ah, uh, fuck. I don't know. Like, just think of, like, a very, very good FPS game. And if the gameplay was fucking ridiculous, yeah, Halo 3 in 2007, nobody would be complaining about the Battle Pass. So I think the Battle Pass is just more... It, it's like, it's one more fucking thing. It's like, if you think that it's bad, guess what? They also have a fucking Battle Pass. It's nuts. If it's really good, like, they're... uh. If it's really good like their previous games. 
Yes, yes. If, it, if the game is very good and it looks good and it plays well and people see there's something innovative and interesting, then I think that players will be completely receptive of a battle pass and they will not give a fuck. I think a battle pass is something that people complain about because a game is bad. I don't think there are that many people that are complaining about a battle pass in games that are genuinely well designed and well maintained. I think that Battle Pass is like, oh, look at this, another AAA game, checking all the boxes with Battle Passes, exclusive pre-order rewards, seasons for a single-player game, and for this one, mandatory online. That's what I think. Six currencies for a single-player game. Holy fuck. Like, that's just... Why? Why is this? Why, why? How does this make the experience better for the user, huh? Oh, I'll show you. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it's right here. Real world. Oh, fuck. Let me see. Uh, I think this is just probably zooming up. Uh, fuck. There we go. There are no fewer than six. So again, like they probably saw six different currencies, but there could be seven or eight. Yeah, it's right here. Like, I, I didn't just invent that. It, that this is, and again, this is a leak. It's not guaranteed to be true, but it was verified by somebody else, and it's being DMCA'd, which implies that it probably is real, but I don't know.